All right, everyone, welcome to another edition of Q&A with Alan and Marshall. Uh, Alan's going to join us shortly, and but in the meantime, we've got Sean Kirkpatrick with uh, the new rebranded print hybrid, and uh, uh, and uh, so we're going to get into all that later. But how you doing today, Sean? Doing pretty good, Marshall. Thanks for having me. Yeah, and uh, so I've been to your shop, and I've been following you for a long time, and you've been coming to Shirt Lab stuff, and you know, so I don't know. We I've known that you've well, I don't know. It's probably been about five years, years five six five years. years, five or six yeah. years. I. I I don't know. <laughs> it's all a blur at this point. It's all a blur, right? So anyway, thanks for joining and helping out today. And we're going to talk about a lot of stuff. And you have really uh, gone crazy with new technology and have invested a lot, frankly, a lot of money into it. And uh, so that's really kind of amazing. And we're going to get into that for a little bit. But um Anyway, so uh, why don't you go ahead and tell us about your shop a little bit. And while you do that, I'm going to show your web page. Sure. So I actually came up on my uh, in the calendar, um, I guess it was Tuesday, Wednesday. And it was uh, said, hey, congratulations, you're 21 years in, in the business. And, you know, it's just kind of funny to, to think that it's been that long. But, yeah, I started out uh, just with a little manual upgraded to a, a six color auto within 18 months and then just kept building and building. Um, I'm, I'm very tech centric. I love technology. And so um, after I got kind of thinking about the digital squeegee and how uh, simulated process was a pain for me in my shop um, to, to deal with that, um, it just kind of, it, it made sense for me. And so uh, I, at the time, m &R was was, moving towards larger shops um, with the technology. And that's who they thought was going to take advantage of it. And when I told them, hey, I, I want this in my shop, they were like, wow, you, you, you have the, you you have the wanted, customers. You wanted what? Be specific. For what? You wanted what in your shop? Uh, you know, I had a customer, I had a couple customers that once I started offering simulated process, they, they were going for it. And, you know, so I was like, OK, well, I quickly found out that it was just taking a long time. You know, you make you make one mistake with the separations and you've got to reburn all the screens, you know, because you got too much red or something like that. It was just taking a lot of time and, and it was coming out good. But I was just spending so much time in the preparation um, that I just knew that there was a better option. And so the digital squeegee offers that, uh, you know, four screens, uh, two minute changes in Photoshop. You know, hey, there's too much red there. Go to Photoshop, change that, save, send. You know, I mean, it's there. Oh, you've got you've got a little bit of underbase showing. No, don't worry about the don't worry about messing with the screens. Go in and if it's a black shirt, put a black line over that and send right. it to go. You know, it's so much easier. And and you know, I've I've been very successful with the technology um, in my shop. And so it, yeah. it's it's been a it's been a journey, but it's fun. Yeah, and uh, if you want to see what his shop's like. Uh, I actually went to his shop, uh, what was that, three years ago? What three or four years ago. Yeah, it was before yeah. I got my second one. Yeah, so uh, so here is, I do a show called Adventures in Apparel Decorating for Jerseys. And uh, this is the show, the episode that we did. And it was a season two, episode four. And he's showing off the digital squeegee. And I'm not going to do that whole thing, but... It was a really good episode, and um, you know, I don't know if you know this, but you know, Jersey. It, most of the views were on Facebook for them. By the way, this show got over a million views in like four weeks. <laughs> right? It, it was super popular for them, and uh, I know M and R really loved it, um, and it was really great. And uh, look, look at our little thumbnail here, right? <laughs> So he's changed hat styles. You used to have that scully cap. Now you got the you got a different hat style now. That you yeah, wear, right? people recognize me at the shows and stuff with my hat. So yeah, I gotta wear it. Yeah, you know, you know that 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 show was really great. You know, you guys put together. Uh, it was edited perfectly, and it was basically a commercial for my for my shop and what I'm offering. So I, I really enjoyed having you here. Um, all of the all of the employees and stuff really thought it was great. So yeah, it, it's, yeah. it's been great. I think you can even go. Um, I have it on my website too. You know, because a lot of people, you know, when they come to my website, they come for the digital squeegee and stuff. And so 
And I mean, it's a perfect, uh, hey, this is what it is, you know. So if somebody doesn't know what a digital squeegee is, why don't you kind of just let them let them in on the, you know, hey, Alan? Hey, how you doing, guys? Sorry I'm late. But, you That's know. okay. Alan had a uh, had a meeting, so he's jumping in late, right? Uh, it wasn't just a customer meeting. It was a corporate sales meeting. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we're we're doing all we can so Alan doesn't get fired. So congratulations, Alan. Well, I left early, so they but they knew it, so I just <laughs> set them out. So Sean was uh, explaining what a digital squeegee is. You know, and it's it. it came, I think MNR broke out with it in 2017, 2018, and so it really surprises me, even in the screen print industry, that people don't know the technology, don't know what it is. They've heard about it somewhere, but they're like, oh, you know, I, I you know. I forget about it. So, you know, the digital squeegee is basically it's, it's a hybrid system to where um, it competed. And I think they built it with they saw DTG and how people wanted to put digital artwork, full CMYK, full color artwork on T-shirts um, and and to make it look great. You know, 300 DPI, we're not using 55 LPI screens or whatever like that. And so what the what the digital squeegee offers is a hybrid system. It's not just print heads printing white and printing CMYK. We use screens to print the underbase. Um, and so we print that, that there. The cost lower because I don't know if you guys know this, but the biggest cost in a DTG print is white because yeah. it takes so much of it, right? And so when you use a screen print white, that huge cost is now uh, like practically nothing. Yeah. And, and we use Aquaflex, which has a flex to it. So a lot of problems with DTG is, you know, you can crack them or after a couple of time, you know, washes and stuff, they crack where the Aquaflex has a very nice flexibility on the shirt. And so it allows that print to stay really nice. Okay. Then we put the CMYK on it. And then the last before it goes on the dryer, we actually put a top clear on that. And that locks in that color. You know, MNR developed this for Adidas and Nike and stuff. And they have very stringent, um, the things that they need to happen for their for their uh to get the check you know of approval and so right. that, that technology is now going to the regular day screen printing and, and the shops that are using the technology and you know i haven't i don't have any complaints about it it's great you know customers come to me when they go uh when they're looking for that or and the majority of a, of a contract printer and so a lot of shops get these jobs that they would normally turn down um, but they know what digital squeegee is. They've heard of me or they contact GSG and GSG kind of sends them to me and it allows them to give their customer what they want. Um, and the, uh, the, the, another thing that I think not a lot of people talk about is because it's on a screen printing press, you can add special effects. You can add metallic or glitter or high density, or you can, you can do some different things uh, with the prints that you can't really do with DTG, which really lends a lot of versatility in a way that you can really get a lot more out of the image or upsell something or whatever, right? Yeah. And also, MNR is coming out with uh, some of their inks, and the other ink companies have um, theirs, but Discharge is really popular too. You do that Discharge base that doesn't feel anything. And by the time you're just throwing on the CMYK in the top coat, and it, you know, after the first wash, it feels like nothing's on there. So it's almost like a water-based print, but it's at 300 DPI full color. Yeah, that's great. That's great. Hey, so we got some folks uh, watching. So we want to say hello. Uh, so Davis, what's going on, guys? Thanks for watching. Charles is here. Hey, Marshall and Sean, happy Friday. Uh, Dan's here. Hey, guys. Uh, uh, Ray's here. Greeting screenlings. Uh, Dan says, my man, Sean, love that guy. <laughs> uh, Frank's here. Good morning, Frank. Good to see you with S&S. &S. Uh, Cindy's here. He's, she's late too. It's okay. Another, uh, another Texas uh, gal, you know, um, Richard's hello from Michigan and Ray's here. I remember when he first bought the digital squeegee and he was talking about drinking the Kool-Aid at Portland shirt lab. Glad I got it dialed in and it's worked great. Awesome. And then uh, Karen's here. Hey, Karen, good seeing you. So, uh, Sean, what was the, uh, when you first started, what was your uh, obstacles you had to overcome, uh, you know, as a screen printer, as things like that? Because yep. while you said I caught, you know, 
MNR did bring this technology to the market in the United States, but the technology, what a lot of people don't know, has been in Asia for a while. But MNR has stabilized it here in the United States and North America. The, the biggest thing for me was going to the water base. You know, I had tried, I'm in West Texas, it's hot, it's dry. And I had tried some water base before and failed very, very yep. quickly. And so I was very concerned about that. But when I went and saw uh, the digital squeegee at the MNR headquarters, they were using high solid acrylics where I was always using low solids and, you know, right. it's drying in the screens like that. And, I, you know, at first they were putting the, the, the ink on the screens for the base. And I was like, I thought you guys use, I thought you use water base. And they're like, yeah, this is high solids acrylic water base. And I was like, oh, I could think I, I think I can work right. this out. So a lot of people here, uh, it's, it's a water base system with the digital squeegee and they're like, nah, too hard. You know, I don't want to deal with it. So it took a little bit of a, retraining in my shop you can't just dump half a gallon of ink on a screen and call it a day you know and not have to worry about it um you got a baby a little bit more pay attention but we have zero problems with the with the base inks or or any of them you know drying in the screen um it it just takes a little bit more babysitting but it's not a problem at all and so that was the first yep. struggle that i thought i was gonna have to deal with within two to three days we had this thing figured out and it was easy we do have a couple foggers in the shop to where it just gives it, you know, uh, a little bit of, you know, keep keep it moist in there. You know, with water-based ink, you as soon as you take it out of the bucket, it wants to start evaporating and stuff. Yep. So you, you got to keep working it. But um, it's really an easy system, you know, especially with registration and and coloring and stuff with the five-minute fixes in Photoshop. It, it it instantly made me know that I made a good decision from the time that I spent trying to dial in the simulated process versus the digital right. solution. So, Sean, I've been to some shops when they have the fodder system like uh, like up on the wall near the ceiling and it just makes the whole room slightly humid to keep because they're all water based shops. And that's how they keep the, It just makes it a better environment for the ink. Do you, is that what you're doing or just using the foggers on the press? We just use the foggers on the certain heads that actually do that because we're not having to set up 10 or 11 screens, you know, to run right. high color jobs. We, we have one or two foggers and we hit them on the one or two heads that we need to keep fresh and, and moist and yep. that's all we need. How about uh, on your screens? I know I've been to a couple shops. Of course, I'm always going to go to the screen side where it, they still don't have their processes dialed in on their screen room. And so it just makes their screens just unbearable reclaiming and it is just the bottleneck. So if I could say that one people would have them, is man, you still have to dial in, even though you're using less screens, dial in your screens. If not, you know, if I get another call from someone going, how do you reclaim hardener, hardened screens? And the answer is you don't. You're not supposed to. You can, but you're not supposed to. And yeah. Yeah. I didn't I didn't know that I was building up to being able to have a shop that could run a digital squeegee effectively, but I was putting in the screen room with with an automatic coders and you know and, and high tech, you know, you need to have CTS, you need to have an automatic coder, you need to have your screens dialed in. And I use for my plastic stuff, we use static aluminum screens. For my DS, we have Newman rollers. And that's just because yep. you know when you're when you're using that hybrid, you know, with with static screens you can compensate for the stretch of the screen some bad tension stuff you put a little pressure here a little less pressure speed you know that that you you can fudge that stuff when you are trying to marry a a base using screens and a digital technology who it doesn't flex it's straightforward it's going to print where it prints no matter what you have to have uh, your screens dialed in. And so we use the, you know, we use the rollers to keep that constant tension yep. um, so that we don't have that problem with it. Now, going back to if you don't have those and you notice that you've got a little stretch in your base, once again, Photoshop, you just stretch the design a little bit, you push save and you go and you can do those so easy changes without having to go back in and burn screens or, or try to do it. So it, it's very flexible and very easy once yeah. you figure out the processes. Yeah, when you have proper tension too, especially when using an HSA, you're gonna keep those uh, mesh openings all the way open. They're not gonna be collapsing. Water-based, I don't care if it's a standard or an HSA, wants to stick with something that's dry. You gotta keep it flowing in. 
So nice move, Sean. And, and we use the thin mesh too, you know. We, we, pop, we pop 305? some a little bit. Do what? 305? No, we're actually using like 225 thin mesh, you know, um, and it, it allows us to put more ink down, but while keeping the same uh, yep. detail. But, you know, we pop some a little bit more often because you got to be, you know, we like them to be nice and tight. But, uh, you know, yeah, it's, it really made a difference and, and helped us uh, adapt to the water base so much easier. Yep. And that helps your exposure, your reclaim, everything, and just getting a smoother print, which is what you want in a digital. And, and you have to post expose with working with water base. And, you know, if, if, if water pays people know that, uh, plastic yep. salt people, you know, uh, and so we have, uh, we have the LED to expose it, wash it out. And then we have a metal halide that we toss every screen in there. Um, post exposed. And, and post exposed, yeah. So we don't have any problem uh, with longer runs of some discharge and stuff. We, you know, we have to look at it a little bit just because it's a little bit more aggressive um, than than the regular inks that we use. But yeah, we've had Are you using a pure, photopoly pure photopolymer emulsion or a dual cure. Uh, I, we're using the trifecta. I think that's a dual cure. It's a. It's not a dual cure. No, it's triple no. cure. It's it's a pure photo. So that's look, that's all right. Good. <laughs> Yeah, it's a lot, you get a lot of product. It's a good product. Yeah. So let's say hi. We got some comments here. So uh, Lakeisha's here. How you doing? Uh, Kim's here. Hey, happy Friday with the little eclipse on there. Right. That's great. Uh, Ray says, yep, the object is small area fogging, just like clean rooms versus small clean spaces. Lots of issues with large scale shop humidification versus small scale space humidification. That's good. Uh, well, sir, there must be exact tension EOM wise for rotor frame is the way to go. Uh, Mr. Wallace is here. Good morning. How are you doing, Peter? Great show today. Thanks for joining us. And this is we're celebrating M and R today on the show. So <laughs> I bleed blue. So yeah, yeah. And uh, so Ray says, have you tried chemical screen hardeners? I'm going to murder you, Ray. <laughs> Yeah, I guess uh, uh, I guess not, right, Sean? You no, know, it's some big orders when we're doing something that's three or four thousand. We we've got we've got a spray that it's not a total hardener that we have to trash right. the screens after, but we'll go in and spray it, um, and and it makes the screens last longer. It gives us yeah. more confidence, especially something with half tones and stuff. Yeah, we definitely do. Ruben's yeah. here. Hey, just happy Friday, gentlemen. Right? I guess he doesn't really know as well. Uh, and then uh, Peter says that I forget to say go Kansas City Chiefs. No, you didn't. You didn't forget. Yeah. <laughs> Mahomes went to Texas Tech, so Lubbock is a is a Kansas City. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And he's and he's been back. I've seen right. that. Yeah. Right. So, um, yeah. And you're in Lubbock, which is uh, and I've been to Lubbock. And let me tell you, if you want to find a city that's brown, go to Lubbock, Texas, right? <laughs> Like, yeah, you they got celebrate it. tan and brown and dirt color, everything, right? Yeah. And, uh, you know, you would think somebody would just make something blue. <laughs> yeah. That's what he has machines for. Yeah. 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 And uh, I don't even know why I'm giggling because we're the same way here in Mesa, Arizona. Yeah. Everything is tan. Right? Yeah, but you don't have the wind, and that's where it's, you know, it's horrible. Well, we have wind. We have wind, right? So, uh, but it's nice. So, all right. Um, so you bought the digital squeegee. In fact, I think you have two now, right? I have two, yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I think one of the things you were explaining to me when you when I was at your shop was the versatility where you could have an underbase. Let's say it's for a, a brand because I know you do a lot of retail brand stuff, and one image might have plaid, and another image might have like a cheetah pattern or something. It's the same underbase screen, and you're able to knock out two orders with one print run with no problems, right? You're still yeah. doing that, correct? Yeah, the variable data is really nice. So you can get those companies that, oh man, I really didn't want to order 300 shirts or 150, whatever. And you offer it, say, hey, just use the same design, toss in different colors, toss in different stuff. As long as those base screens are the same, then we can toss variable data. It's literally push, go to the next design and it, customers that use it are very happy with it because they can have three or four designs and I can charge them for one. And so that, yeah. yeah, it's really cool. Right. And, you know, I wish, 
I wish the idea uh, was more popular. And I think it just takes kind of a mind click. That, well, you know, what? they're not screens. How can we do this? And, you know, I have to make a video for them and kind of do that and stuff. But, mm -hmm. you know, I, I think that uh, one, because I'm a contract shop, I don't uh, I don't have a lot of marketing towards that. Um, but a lot of screen printers that market towards, they're not educated on the options either. And so, I, you know, and it's funny, you know, even since six years that the technology has been out, I don't think that it's really gone mainstream yet. But, you know, with with AI and full color artwork that anybody can create, I really believe the digital era is just prime for for the future of what's coming out. Yep. <laughs> Which is why you know and we can talk about that next is that you know uh the the dtf scene um i really think you know i was at mnr for a hybrid user group conference last summer and they kind of showed us a back room with the the dtf machine that that they were developing and i've always felt dtf you know it feels like you know like the printed vinyl and stuff and it, I, I wasn't in you know concerned with it or anything like that but the way i felt it and i said wow you know this is pretty cool and then started thinking about it um i wanted to basically try to develop the coloring system and the color profile in order to um marry the digital squeegee and the quattro and be able to print the same thing um mm. offering customers you know hey you know you ordered 500 digital squeegee prints but dang they came back and needed 15 more let me print that on the, the uh, quattro and you can have the same quality print and uh and be happy happy customers and before the show started you sh you had a transfer it was a design you had a shirt and a transfer sure they're, they're pretty much identical yeah right? there you go there's this one right there that's the shirt and i'm developing it's a, this was in the very beginning stages but uh, you can kind of see the difference in it um and, and I'm still working that out, but it's it's very close to probably the average customer is not going to see a difference at all. Yeah. And so what that allows if you know, if I have some misprints in the order and, uh, you know, I need well, to fix it's, Maybe it's more of a print on demand scenario too, right? Yeah, hundred percent. Well, that offers that up to my shop now too. So it, it, it was kind of a threefold thing. Hey, I can use it to fix some problems on my end with the digital squeegee right. if I mess up some prints. I can now offer customers a lower volume, uh, you know, for for a reorder, and then also, hey, I can start getting into. I, I'm actually into the contract DTF business now, and so I have uh, some screen print shops that, you know, it, it it's amazing that you know I have conversation with these printers, and they're like, I don't even like setting up anything over four colors on my presses anymore. They're 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 heat pressing everything nowadays, you know, and it's just amazing that you know those rotating uh, heat press tables now that people are you know popping up left and right, you know, you have two people and you get your transfers in and you stick it in. You don't have to worry about cleaning screens or reclaim screens or setting up or registration. You don't have to do anything like that. So you can heat press a hundred t-shirts in the same or less time with less labor, with less setup. You know, I mean. And so these shops are getting very creative in the efficiency uh, mm -hmm. of what they're doing in the shops. Yeah. And um, so I think digital is really going to emerge. Um, and uh, and you're starting to see that with print on demand. You're starting to see that with people using, uh, you know, my new bromance, you know, mid journey, right? We're, we're creating a lot of really fun and interesting images that we can, that's the, the art part of the thing and we add the logo and do the thing and uh and it's it looks so cool and why limit your color palette to a couple of colors when you could do yeah. something with a lot more and uh especially with this technology um you know a lot of clients that how it was printed is not in their mind they just don't care you right? could probably go into a person's closet and find 10 t-shirts all printed differently you know you got your plastic all you got your water base you got yeah. your dtg you got your dtf <laughs> you got your hybrid i mean and the customers don't care you know if they like the shirt if they have right. a a memory tied to it as long as the design looks good they're not they don't care how it feels for the most part right. you know or 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 how it looks so you know really uh, you know as screen printers i find we're our worst enemies sometimes because we nitpick 
the smallest things that, that we think are the biggest things, but for the end customer. Oh, yeah. Well, when you look at, so here's the, here's the thing that and I've talked about this before, right? If you put on your screen printer glasses, everything has to be screen printing and we're comparing right. screen printing, right? But if we put on our entrepreneurial glasses, everything's about profit. Yeah. Yeah. The DTF. What, what glasses are you, are you wearing when you look at what you're doing? Yeah, DTF has gotten really big on the scene in the last year or so, and you see more of the bigger companies coming out with their equipment and servicing stuff. Um, and so, you know, I go on Facebook and I see, you know, these hardcore screen printers, you know, they don't have the technology in their shop, probably never will, but they're like, it'll never take off. It'll never, it's never going to replace uh, screen printing in, yeah. you know, those 10,000 shirt job, you know, whatever. But for a hundred shirts, three or four colors, or eight, 10 colors and a hundred shirts. Guess yeah. what? You're not going to take that order, but you can contract it out to DTF and he presses those in the shop and you have a customer that's happy. And you know, it, it's, it's a mindset. And it was a mindset with me with, uh, with the digital squeegee and going hybrid. But once you see it and understand it, there's a little click in your mind that says, Hey, there are other ways to do things. Right. And, and, you know, you just have to, you have to be open to possibilities and, and it's a difference in some people's uh, thinking. Yeah. So, you know, I, I talk with a, a, a crazy amount of people every week and the majority of shops, their average order is under 144 pieces. Yeah. A lot of shops, their average order is, 100, is under 72. Yeah. It just, that's what they do. That's what they sell, right? Because they're in some small market and they're doing some stuff for these little bitty things. All this. And, you know, in the shop that I ran, we just call those smalls. Anything under 72 pieces is a small order. And I want the larger orders on the autos. And I had manual presses that printed all those dicky things, right? And, or it went to DTG, you know. Um, yep. So the, uh, and I think this technology, whether it's the DTF or it's DTG or it's a digital squeegee or whatever, I think a lot of this stuff is really helping people um, get to a better sense of profitability when they look at the amount of people, the amount of materials, the amount of consumables, the amount of time it takes to do things. And a lot of cases it's simply faster, especially for smaller orders to do a digital print. Well, and the inks and the and the colors and you know DTF isn't what it, it was two years ago, and so a lot of people have those mindsets. If you haven't gone to a conference or you haven't seen one, you don't know. You know, it's like right. you know, and so you get to these conferences. You also get to talk to people, and you but you get to see the newest technology and the newest things. And this isn't the DTF of two years. Well, ago. and the hand of a DTF uh, isn't the ink; it's the adhesive, right? Yeah. So a lot of people don't aren't aren't educated. Right, they just don't understand this stuff, and so they just say, "Oh, it feels like crap." It, uh, you know, like a just like there's a really good screen print, there's really good DTF, right? Just like and, there's really uh, good DTG. A lot of people, you know, I've I've seen some, and I've talked to some people that were like, you know, mine doesn't crack, and mine doesn't, you know, doesn't fade and stuff, and that's because they've honed in the process and they do it right. But you know, it, it, it's all in how much time are you willing to put in to learn in your craft? And if you get it and you think that's an easy button, and a lot of people did that with the digital squeegee when they had a lot of COVID money and stuff, they, you know, uh, they thought, oh man, I'm just going to put this in and it's going to be so easy. And they didn't want to put the time into learning the differences and learning the intricacies right. of making it right. And they were like, it doesn't work. Well, yeah. it does work, you know? Right. I'm still going to say, Sean, exactly 100% what you said, but I'm still watching this play out almost exactly like when DTG came to the market. I'm hearing the same, same issues of it doesn't feel like screen printing. It's not this. It's not this. You know, you use the term the easy button. I remember using that term there where everybody thought it was push play, and it's not no matter what your process is, and you have to no matter what. From screen printing, I like that. I'm going to steal that, Marshall. Take off your screen printing glasses because the screen printers, we will look at going, well, here's what it doesn't do instead of what it does do. When DTG came out, I wrote an article on DTG versus screen, and it wasn't a comparison. It was here's where the markets are. And I thought even though if it could only do on white and you had infinite color for small, small runs, I thought it was genius, and it is. 
Um, but you know, screen printers, we got into that. We are screen printers. We're not digital. And it's playing out the same way. You've done it right, Sean, by, man, honing in your processes, going, I am going to look at it a different for what the markets are, whether it be screen, whether it be digital or, uh, you know, a hybrid or, um, or a DTF. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I was with a, a distributor too. We're talking about DTF that it doesn't feel right. He doesn't like the feel of it. Well, you're a dealer on there. You got to look at your customer. You have to look at what the market is and the end user doesn't know and usually doesn't care. Yeah. Hey, we got some comments. Let's keep, keep up with those. So Peter says the red Raider connection runs deep. And Cindy says tomorrow the winds will be up again in Odessa. Lots of orange dirt. Yep. I'm sure you're excited about that, Cindy. Uh, Ray says, I'm about to say, just spent three weeks in Phoenix and every damn thing is brown. Yeah. Come on, you were in Phoenix? I didn't get that call. What's up? Um, <laughs> Brian, hello from Missouri. Good seeing you. Yeah, two two hat loving guys right there. <laughs> Uh, Frank says, other than price, what are the major differences between choosing a Quattro and a Polaris? Well, one's DTF, one's DTG. That's probably the difference. Right. <laughs> yeah. And the price is significant difference, too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, uh, Peter, you want to chime in on that one? Uh, Ray says, and with transfers in a cassette, I can feed the rotating heat press with a cheap XY robot. But I'm not trying to get rid of jobs, right? I, I, saw, I saw a video um, uh, from Vespa that John Potter, somebody, I don't know who put it out, but it was a, a automatic transfer machine where they would pick up the transfer and it put it on the thing and it would rotate around, it would heat press it, and another thing came and peeled the transfer paper off and then somebody could take it off. And it looked like it was really slow. And so my comment was, is this trade show speed or actual speed? Because, you know, at a trade show, they run everything slow because they don't want to run on our shirts or things, right? And it was filmed at FESPA, right? Um, so these things are out there, right? So, And they need to be. And I'm glad that uh, that was shown at FESPA because automation, it's not about getting rid, of, getting rid of jobs. It's just about being more profitable. And it needs to be done in our industry. Yeah, so our friend Mark's got all the kids at Skills USA watching. Hey guys, welcome yeah, to the what? industry. Hats off to Mark Soldonic and GSG for stepping up. Yeah. Uh, it's kind of last minute down there at Skills, so way to go. I have had the opportunity to judge Skills USA at the Nationals and would gladly do it again. Mark and I have talked. He, we talked on its way down in the airport. So all you kids, man, keep it up. Keep learning. Keep doing yeah. your job. Who's I know Johnny Shell used to run that. Who is doing that now? Do you know? Uh, it's we don't want to talk about that online, Marshall. I'll tell you afterwards. <laughs> it's ugly. All right. All prints should be a screen print to screen printer, just like everything is a nail to a carpenter. And just on that, it's not Printing United. That's kind of they're involved, but not to the right. point. So it's not a shot at Printing United. Hey, Cal's here. Good morning from the Bay Area. Good seeing you, Cal. Uh, Brian says the easy button starts with sales people saying that's how it works. 100%. That's how I sold on DTG 10 years ago. Drives, it drove me insane because I sold DTG printers and our competitors would just act like there's an easy button and I would go, no, no, no. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. So Pete says you can look at uh, the past a few largest institutional printers and focus on the industry innovators. Sean and the team and Integrity is definitely one of the very early adopters. Yep. Uh-huh. And I'm not surprised at all that Sean is pushing the boundaries and opening up new markets for DTF transfer technology. Uh, Ray says, yep, I've already seen transfers on a robot in another industry medical device. They ran at 600 an hour. Yep. Technology's out there. Joe says, I'm listening. Great stuff. Appreciate y'all. Thanks, Joe, for watching. Did you see what Peter said above Joe? Uh, this one? Yep. Most of all, the future product development in DTF is on automation. Yeah, interesting right. to see. Good, good. We want to know all about that, Peter. <laughs> um, all right. So, um, one of the things I wanted to talk about next was selling the result, and I think a lot of times 
in this industry, we sell the ink on cotton and we don't think about the value that we're selling to our customers. And I know you do a really great job of this where you're, you know, when somebody, you know, the whole, the, the, the whole story where somebody goes to a hardware store to look for something to make a three quarter inch hole with. And so we're not selling the drill bit, we're selling ability to make the hole, right? And so I think with you, right, you have the ability to help your customers be really versatile in what you're doing, what you're offering, solving their problems, and you're selling that result to them. You're not selling the print, right? Can you talk about that a little bit, Sean? Yeah, right now, I mean, I have three of the four printing technologies. I've got screen printing, I've got hybrid, not DTF, the other one being DTG. Um, and it just lets me offer almost everything to the customer, you know? And so when they come to me, you know, most of the time I'm not telling them, hey, this is how I'm gonna do it. I choose the best, which I think that is going to be the best and most efficient way and economical way to do it. And the customers are happy, they keep coming back. But it allows me to just pick and choose, you know, because you know, yeah, you can you, you can use a wrench to hammer in a nail, but, you know, the hammer is a better tool for it. And so, it, it you know, it's nice to have those different technologies in the shop. Yeah, right. Well, how come you don't have the DTG? What's your problem? <laughs> yeah, I never got into DTG because it was slow as one offs. And so that's when yeah. the, I'm just teasing, Sean. Printing 375 yeah. to 400 with a digital squeegee. That's really why I thought, OK, this is something now that I can get into a digital yeah. a digital format of, of decorating. So I think Edmund should just give you a Polaris just because you're such outspoken. I wouldn't take it. I don't want it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, and the, co the, the Quattro, you know, uh, originally, you know, and they, and they like to say because big shops are having the digital squeegees, big shops are buying the Polaris. And uh, they were selling that as, as kind of a marrying of products. Yeah, right. yeah. And now the Quattro is out. I really believe that a lot of digital squeegee um, owners are going to move to the quattro also for for having different um why why do you think that yeah do what why well uh you know you it's digital and digital so you know like i said having that the option to uh fix some misprints and rather than setting up the whole mm -hmm. job on digital squeegee again um i can i can do that um also, customers can come in and say, hey, the, the customer loved those 500 shirts that you printed, but we need 20 more. Can you do that? Yeah, I can do that. And I'll make it look the same. Um, and then, you know, now I have a, another revenue source of, right. um, of either right. doing on-demand stuff or contract right. ETF, you know? Yeah. And I don't know if you remember, Sean, but you did some shirts for me for my brother-in-law. He's That's a big right. barbecue chef guy. And I did about, I don't know, about 50 or 60 shirts. And they were d done with the digital squeegee because I wanted to experiment designing for it and actually getting a print done. And you were very gracious in helping with that. And uh, I competed in a barbecue competition with him uh, two or three weeks ago here in Phoenix. And he's wearing his shirt. I'm wearing my shirt. And he washes and wears his all the time. And I hardly ever wear mine. And the shirts were nearly identical. Yeah, that top coat makes the world of difference because yeah, it does. you and know are, that's where DTG didn't have it done. You know, yeah. and some of it has that rub in the washer and stuff, and it can go off. That top coat preserves yeah. those colors, and you know, yeah, I mean, it's supposed to be 40, 50 washes, and that's what Nike needed, and so yeah. M and R really came out with a great product with it. And they were printed on that Jersey Snow Heather shirt that I really like. That's like I, that's like my favorite shirt. <laughs> so. Um, uh, I just like it. there's something about how it feels, you know, it's just different, right? And that's that's what I like. Um, so sure. the shirt lab Austin, we're actually using a different shirt, so, so we're not we're, we've gone beyond that snow heather because we've used it for so many times, right? So we're doing something different. And, and speaking of shirt lab, with with uh, what Peter Walsh said in DTF and automation, you know, and that's what shirt lab is going to be about. But yeah. I'm I'm very tech centric in my shop. Uh, I'm trying to put every piece of automation in it. Um, I'm looking at finally getting to um, automated uh, reclaim. And it's not that I have 300 screens a day. It's that I don't want to have a dedicated employee that that is coding and cleaning 50 or 60 screens. I want it to be, hey, here's a set of screens that need to be cleaned. And as somebody walks by the machine, 
they can toss one in and take it out. And it could be something that's just happening all day, every day. And I don't have to have one person dedicated to it. Yeah. You know, I, I think the return on that is incredible. I think uh, hiring is is harder now than ever and, and paying people. And, you know, it's a lot easier to teach somebody to set a screen in a bracket and push a button than to have them being around those toxic, you know, or not toxic way. Cause I use easy way and it's great stuff, but you know, still <laughs> it's, it's, it can get splashed on your face. Yeah. Doing that. X-ray on the oxidate. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so so, um, right, so yeah. somebody's going to be calling you about a blue water soon. <laughs> yeah. Right. You know, and uh, you know, we'll, we'll talk with shirt lab. Uh, you know, I'm really excited and uh, I, follow tech, all of this stuff, but you know, these robots that are coming out, Apple's in the works of it. Tesla has got one in the works. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of work in a screen print shop that is robot work. You know, yeah. at the end of the dryer, I, I fully believe that, you know, there will be those robots that pick a shirt up by, you know, the collar, flick it once and put it on there. That's robot taking a shirt off. You know, that's robot work. And oh, now they have the passport, right? Uh, you no. know, the shop I ran in Milwaukee, we had our passport. Well, you know, the passport takes a certain configuration and size, and I don't have that with my shop. So having mm -hmm. something like that and, you know, uh, you know, MNR is developing a, a camera system that is yeah. has I a saw that at Long Beach. Yeah, you saw it, you know, I wanted to buy it and it's not ready yet, but yeah. I'm going to put a couple of them on each of my presses. And what that does is it checks for errors and it lets you know that takes the responsibility off the employee, you know, yeah. uh, you know, but at the end of the shift after they've printed 2000 of the same shirt and they've looked at it a million times and they're wondering, what are we fixing for dinner or whatever? And then 40 shirts go by and they're down the dryer before, right. before something's noticed, just putting more technology and, and automation in your shop just makes so much sense to me. And it's going to allow shop owners to be profitable and efficient and, you know, uh, just just keep things flowing and i think if you i think if you don't look at technology to help you uh you're, you're going to be in a world of hurt in a couple of years yeah. i love you know one of the things with auto autom i love you're looking at automation i love you're looking at technology i'm excited about the video stuff that mnr is working on i i agree you a hundred percent that you know as people scale on there we always think and i, I said this at a conference um with printing an edge last year, when you scale, we always look at like customers and cash flow and things like that. And you've got to scale two things that we always forget about. Scale your raw materials on there and make sure you scale that and scale your technology. And that technology may not be in your in, in your industry yet, but it's out there and you'll have to help develop it. So right. yeah, hats off to you, uh, Peter, doing a great job on that. And then I think on auto reclaim, the reason you're going to be successful, regardless of the machine, is because, again, you have your processes dialed in. You don't dial them in. It's going to be rough. Well, and yeah. And you're going to you're going to be successful uh, just because of that. And I've had great success in being an early adopter in all of it. You know, I mean, yeah. it's scary sometimes to think. Oh, dang, is this going to, you know, is the next one that gets sold to the next person going to be totally different because, you know, you're, you're getting early, you know, uh, versions of the equipment. You know, the digital squeegee hasn't changed right. for six years, you know. I mean, it literally is the same machine that they're selling now that they are six years mm -hmm. ago. They, they they did their due diligence in making sure that, uh, um, you know, it was it was right to market. Now, there's uh, I think there's some tubes and maybe a little pump, you know, they've upgraded and stuff during that. And there's minor, minor, uh, minor things that can be put added onto it. But yeah, being an early adopter, you know, the Quattro is out. I want it. The digital squeegee is there. I want it. You know, I, I, I want to be on the early things because I never want to play catch up. You know, if something really hits off and, you know, the market says, oh, my gosh, you know, you know, some famous person wears a digital shirt. You know, and everybody wants it all of a sudden. You can't you can't put those things into your shop, you know, next week. You know, you know, big machines and, and that kind of stuff takes a lot of time to do. And uh, I never want to be playing catch up and trying to, you know, force it. All right. So here's a question for you. Right. So you're a GSG customer. I want you to talk about what it's like to work with GSG. You're buying your supplies and your equipment from them. Uh, you're making major capital purchases with them. So talk about that experience a little bit about, you know, holding your hand through that process and getting things to be set up right and all that. 
I'm really blessed here in Texas. GSG is is down here. And if I order by three or four o'clock on Monday or Wednesday, it shows up at 9.30 a.m. the next day. And so, you know, anything, uh, they, they keep great stock. And if they don't have stock in a Dallas, they have Austin and Houston, which is a day shipping away too. So it's been great. Uh, my 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 rep at GSG Kelly Burns. He's been my rep for 21 years. You know he's, you know, and so we've developed a really good relationship where you know I can text him. He answers my questions. Um, he gets me what I need. So and and Ryan Barger, uh, my MNR rep, is great too. He actually installed my Sportsman in 2004 because he was a, a an installation tech at MNR, and then he's moved now into sales. So uh, between the two of them, I'm very well taken care of and. You know, very blessed because I know not everybody has that luxury of having very well knowledge people that uh, it, that very much focus on on customers and the relationships that they built. Yeah, yeah, you can buy stuff from anybody, right? And uh, and I'm a big believer in companies that offer that support. That they've got that crazy question. You some customer give you some ridiculous thing at the last minute and you're trying to pull off a miracle and you need somebody in your corner to uh, talk you off the ledge <laughs> and get you the right answer. Uh, and I've been really blessed in, in my career with folks that do that. Um, you know, I, I don't know everything and I really rely on people who have that knowledge where I can text or phone or whatever and I'm getting the answer. And I think having having that in your corner just makes makes your business better and uh and maybe somebody out there is cheaper but you're not getting that support and that's what really matters in the long run well that's with the quattro machine you know uh, people are finding out and they're you know everyone's looking at dtf now and the quattro is is on the pricier side from what you can get you know you can you can go and do it yourself and try to get a machine from china and you know it, if it gets there it's in a box and the the manuals in chinese and you got to install everything and get it calibrated and do all that stuff you know it was a seamless experience with with the quattro and mnr and that's one of the main reasons i got into it finally because i knew that one the machine was going to work and two if something didn't work they were going to make it work you know and they were going to fix right. it and and literally i had some issues um after the install and you know a tech was here within two days and got me fixed and everything like that so the service and support and the fact that you know i've got marco and i've got his cell phone and i you know i've created a quattro owner page that on facebook that we can go on and 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 talk about stuff and as we're learning the machine and stuff like that i'm actually the newbie in there because the rest of the people in there have already delved into dtf and then they've upgraded their machines to the quattro so nice. it, it's me you know where the digital squeegee page was me answering questions and stuff i think most of the quattro is me asking questions i think those guys are getting irritated <laughs> but you know uh it, it's it's really it's really the the community right. and stuff but the right. fact that i knew that surface import was there behind the quattro versus trying to figure it out on my right. own so Sean, when you got your hybrid and started on there, how many different uh, inks did you have to test out? I know Magnus a big one in the industry, Matsui is. I'm not sure which one you're using, but how many did you have to test them out or did M&R and your supplier at GSG just say, all right, here's what we're recommending and just help you dial you know, right away? M&R was partial. And when I think in the development of the digital squeegee, they hit uh, Aquarius, there's Aquarius line, there's Matsui right. and there's Magna. And so they hit all of them and said, hey, guys, we're doing this. We'd love for you to develop, you know, with us and stuff yep, like that, absolutely. different products. It, it's funny because I on my prints, I use Aquaflex as my base, which is a Magna. Right. I use uh, uh, Matsui Digital Clear for my for the, the Tyco. Yep. And then I use uh, the MNR uh, Top Coat. Yeah, so I'm using three different, three different right. products for for my regular printing, and it all works great. And so I basically picked what I feel for my shop is the best for the application, and yeah, you know, it works. Thank you for sharing that. I find that a lot of people do in water base. That's what they do. They're finding out the best ones. It's never just with one brand. It's usually some mismatch like that that they have made to work and found for their process. So, thank you for sharing that. That's awesome. Do you, do you think that's because you're in Lubbock, Texas, 
that that works for you. Like if you were in Seattle, maybe you would you choose different brands or different. Uh, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> I think everybody kind of gets in there. Right. And most of the time, it's what they start with. Um, if they're a water base and they're using Matsui, it's a very natural progression to just get the Matsui line. And, and right. if you get used to the intricacies of that ink, then it's, why would you change? You so know, it's a comfort yeah. level more than geography. Yeah. Yeah. A hundred percent. And so really it's, it's what you either know from the beginning or kind of what you decided to start out with. Um, mm -hmm. and then you just figured out and then, yeah, if it ain't broke, right. don't fix it. So Peter just wrote the encyclopedia here. So share that. A sneak peek under the MNR DTF development tent extended autonomous system operation with controlled film tracking, higher capacity of adhesive powder and film allows for longer periods of unattended operation, allows for a single operator to run multiple machines, full workflow systems from lead to print matches the graphic to the specific garment to confirm the image placement and size, automated selected X and Y axis and contour cutting system. Oh, I like the cutting system. Full system connectivity through folding. Wow, nice. that's great. Wow. Yeah, M, M and R over so, the last few years, they've really taken the point of moving. They saw where it's going, you know, digital yeah. computer technology. They've got they saw it and they're putting very strong resources to back that up. You know, we saw it with the digital squeegee, we're seeing it with the, the Polaris, now we're yes. seeing it with the Quattro and more automation just makes more sense to, to make it all flow easier and more efficiently. So yeah. Peter, if you guys have an Accelerate uh, for this year and you're showing that, um, pick me, I wanna come. <laughs> I'd love to. Will you be my plus one? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, so we got a couple of minutes left, and I want to talk about Shirt Lab, right? So uh, we've got whoop, we've got something coming up, Shirt Lab Austin, and Sean, you're coming. Alan, yeah. you're coming. I so just up. They're commenting, are coming, right? So <laughs> what just about up this, yesterday, last minute. <laughs> what about this event, Sean? Are you excited about? I want to. You're. You're a guy coming to learn. I want to know what you're excited about. Well, Shirt Lab is always a great experience because you find, you know, it gives you another chance, you know, other than the uh, the, the conventions and stuff to actually sit and have conversations with other printers. Um, but this one was really exciting for me because it's about automation. And um, it has some some guys that are really knowledgeable on that and how to incorporate that in shops. And so that's probably my number one priority in my shop over the next two years is automating systems and putting in equipment that, that takes away uh, um, the, the laborist, you know, employee kind of part of the business. So yeah, the automation is awesome. I think it's going to be a great show or yeah, event. Yeah. So Justin is going to share his lead generation sequence that he does with VAs. Uh, Davis is talking about his sales strategies that he does he automates practically everything. Uh, Cole sharing his automated order entry. Uh, Shane with Stoke Down Printing is talking about his automations that they've developed for inventory management. And Chris with Deloitte, um, who, by the way, he does metrics and KPI tracking for the military and for huge manufacturing companies but he's focused on something for our industry and he's going to share what he's doing. And then at the end of the day, we're going to have breakout groups where whatever person that you really liked, you can hang out with them for an hour and have a candid conversation with them about whatever you're doing in your shop. Right. Um, and so I have to say thank you so much for our sponsors uh, and really appreciate you guys. And these are the people who make this event happen because Frankly, these things are expensive to put on, and we we love our sponsors, so thanks a lot. So um, you can buy a ticket if you're interested at shirtlablive.com, uh, and we've got, uh, I was talking with the hotel. Um, the hotel block sold out, and they've actually released some more rooms. So uh, the, right here on the webpage, you can you can get a room with your ticket, right? So uh I think it's going to be a great event. We've got lots of networking and hangout time. Uh, you know, stalls, by the way, on our Friday night thing, uh, they give away their Vision IQ uh, 
heat press for the winner of our legendary rock, paper, scissors tournament. And I know, I know Sean, you've been practicing, right? Man, I stink. I never make it past the <laughs> round every single time. Hey, and Marshall, are there still openings for uh, the dinner that night? Yeah, so the di so the dinner, what we did was uh, previously we sold the dinner as an extra, but we got some more sponsors this year and we're able to offer the dinner to everybody. That dinner, yeah. it, you know, the, sh the, the event is great. You're sitting, you're taking notes, you're talking and everything, but that dinner is at the yeah. end of the day, everyone's eating and drinking and just joining conversations. I really enjoy those dinners. Yeah, so this dinner uh, is going to be at Maggiano's, which is an Italian place. We've had uh, our shirt lab, Chicago, was it Maggiano's, or maybe it was St. Louis. I can't remember. Uh, but we've had so many. <laughs> but, you know, we have a private room. We have a private bartender. It's open bar. We've got a uh, choice of dinner. You know, it's just going to be really great. And if you've been to any industry dinner, these things last like three or four hours. This isn't like, 45 minutes, I'm out of here. This yeah. is like hanging out and giggling about stuff. And uh, and what I think what's really great about the Shirt Lab events is we have people who come back multiple years, right? So how many have you been to, Sean? Like three, right? This will be my fourth or fifth one. Actually. Fourth or fifth yeah. one, right? We have people who come back year over year because this is where their education is coming from. And, you know, then there's industry events that happen all the time. And I'm not knocking those, and there's certainly that everybody has their place. Our focus is on tactical information that on Monday you can use and kick some ass, right? right? That's kind of what our game is. And this isn't theory. This is specific things that you can use, right? You can develop things, or and we're giving you the recipe to bake the cake. That's that's what we try to do, right? So, um, so shirtlablive.com get signed up we would love you to come hang out with all three of us we'll be there right yep. um and uh i've never been to austin ever so i'm very excited about going me uh, either i've never been I, there either. time to get weird right yeah well i've been i've been to lubbock texas mm -hmm. i've been to, very very different i've been to <laughs> dallas i've been to houston i've been to el paso i've been to uh where else i've been i've been all over around Dallas, you know, Arlington and all those places, right? Yeah. But never been to Austin, so I think that's going to be fun. So. I've only been to Houston to uh, Dallas-Fort Worth uh, to Galveston and stuff when I was younger, but looking forward to going to Austin. Right, so uh, hold on. So Peter says, there's a major event later this summer in Chicago with information on MNR and other leading industry suppliers. Hey, right. Peter, make sure you send me information on that. And then Brian says the dinner's last hours when NOLA, it goes till dawn for some. Shirt lab for the win. Yeah. So let me tell you, uh, the the hotel we have has a bar to sing. <laughs> so, there uh, might be a few people hanging out there. Yeah. Uh, we, we make sure that our, our people are taken care of, right? So yeah. uh, anyway, um, so uh, what else is going on with you, Sean? We got a couple more minutes, and I don't. I want to use up our time. Right? Um, yeah, we we're talking about uh, before the the rebranding that I did, and Peter Walsh. Yeah, said I wanted integrity. to talk about that. So the, your integrities. Hold on, let me show your your thing. Right. So you were integrities, and now you're print hybrid. And look at this awesome. Oh wow! Thing. Don't you love that? So. Um, Hey, that comes from the jerseys video. I yeah, it, well, I mean, it was edited so great. So, you know, we just took it. Yeah, it was great. So, uh, all right. So tell us about rebranding, why you did that, and talk about developing this. I love this logo, John. Yeah. It's great. Yeah, so, you know, Integrities was somewhere when we started out in 2003. Um, in fact, the name of the business was Integrities.com because it, we thought it was so cool to have a website. You know, we wanted to make sure people knew. Um, but it, we... At the beginning, when the business was started, we were focusing on churches and youth ministry. And so combining T's and integrity, we, you know, it was kind of a play on words. But over the years, you know, people can never spell it right. I have to tell them uh, it's the word integrity. Drop the Y at the end. Look up your name. Just make sure it's spelled right. I yeah. Could yeah, yeah. So it was, you know, after after 20 years, it was a time to rebrand. And I wanted to pick something that really uh 
mentioned and showed that I'm into digital printing on apparel at, at large and small quantities. And so print hybrid, it actually, I came up with the name during a, uh, during the print hustlers uh, conference. And I bought the domain right there. I said, man, print hybrid that, you know, that just makes sense. And so, uh, just in developing the, the wording for there, you know, uh, the word print inside, uh, with the CMYK blending saying yeah, that it's full. It. Well, full it's, it's CMY, there's no K, right? But yeah, I, yeah, right. Yeah. And I, um, what I love about your logo, right. Is the, um, the chess moves that you've made with the blend in each of the letters of print, right? Yes. So if you look at the cyan part and the P, the exact opposite is in the T, right? And then if you look at the uh, the R and the N, the exact opposite is the I. So rotating that color blend through each letter, I think really makes that logo pop. Yeah, thanks. We, we like it. We're still working. We're actually looking for, a, for an icon. We're in the development of an icon to kind of... Uh, pop with that but yeah, yeah definitely trying to build something uh that's going to be known and people will say oh sean kirkpatrick with print hybrid instead of integrities but yeah, yeah trying to do something for the next 20 years yeah yeah so right. this, this is our uh mid-journey iteration on some sort of something for about 200 little play on little shapes and stuff that'll get you there right yeah that's actually what, exactly what i did and we we found a couple that i liked and i said let's take that out of that one that out of that one uh, yeah, AI is, AI is mind blowing, but that's for, for another call. Yeah, well, it is. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, that's awesome. All right. So, um, so, uh, you guys have a great weekend. Everyone we watching. We got a couple, we got a couple things, Marshall. Hold on. I got to ask him about this. Oh, okay. It says, ask Sean about Bit Bitcoin and trips to Asia. <laughs> yeah. What do I need to know since I'm leaving for Asia in a, in a few weeks? I've, I've gone down the rabbit hole eh, with NFTs and crypto and uh, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I, I I could talk about it forever. But yeah, I, I got so into it that I got a free trip to Bali for uh, for 10 days last fall, and it was unbelievable. But Really? Yeah. That's great. Awesome. Great. So other comments, digital squeegee is hands down the coolest. The real bridge gap will be continued to push the industry forward. Thanks, Dean. Cindy says, thanks, y'all got to run. So do we. See ya. And Dean says, icon playing on uh, pH and pH levels would be cool. Keep your pH levels up. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Um, all right. Well, cool. Well, uh, thanks, Sean, for being a guest. We really appreciate you. and look forward to seeing you in a couple of weeks in Austin. And uh, don't go anywhere. We're just going to end the show. So yep. thanks, everyone, for watching. Have a great week, everyone.